Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today in episode three of our climate dynamics series, we're going to start talking about Milankovitch cycles and how changes in Earth's orbit affects its climate. In the first two episodes, we've looked at um, black body equilibrium equations uh, for the Earth. Uh, the first time we didn't take into account the fact that the Earth has an atmosphere. And so in the second episode, we corrected that, understood how the atmosphere acts to warm Earth's surface. Um, and now we're going to go back out to looking at um, long term changes in Earth's orbit. So there are three main things that change with Earth's orbit that affect affect its climate, and uh, that's going to be our next three videos. So today we're talking about eccentricity, the eccentricity of Earth's orbit, how it changes over time, and then how that's going to affect Earth's climate. So collectively, those three things that affect Earth's climate from its orbit are called Milankovitch cycles. So let's all think back to like the first time we ever learned about the planets, probably sometime in elementary school. And at that time, you probably learned that the planets don't orbit the sun in circles, but ellipses. Um, and an ellipse, one of the properties of an ellipse is its eccentricity. And that's kind of a measure of either how close to a circle it is or how far away from a circle. So a perfect circle has an eccentricity, which we represent by like an epsilon of zero. Um, and then eccentricity can never be greater than one. So the, but the bigger the number, the bigger eccentricity is, the more like an ellipse. Um, so the more squashed it's going to be. So the little dashed green line here I drew would be an eccentricity of maybe 0.5. So an eccentricity of one would actually just be a flat line. It's like the shape squashed so much it collapsed into a line. But that's eccentricity. And Earth's eccentricity actually changes with a period of about 100,000 years. So over the course of 100,000 years, our eccentricity will say increase and then decrease and get back to where it started. And those changes are caused by a sort of gravitational tug of war between like the, the Jupiter and Saturn are trying to pull Earth one way and the Sun's trying to pull it another. And over long periods of time, this is gonna cause changes in our eccentricity. Right now, Earth's eccentricity is 0 0.016. So we're very close to a circle right now. And actually our eccentricity is going down. The minimum it's going to ever get is like 0 0.005. Earth's eccentricity can get up to as big as like 0.057-ish. So the, we're never going to look like this green thing that I drew, but it can help us to maybe kind of understand um, what's going on, having the more exaggerated picture. So right now, the Earth is actually closer to the sun by about 3 million miles in January than it is in July. That's a non-trivial difference. Right now, even with such a small eccentricity of like 0.016-ish, um, the Earth is still closer to the sun in January than it is in July. It's actually a difference of about 3 million kilometers. So that's quite a bit. Um, so let's think about how eccentricity is gonna shape the climate of Earth. When thinking about how eccentricity affects Earth's climate, um, I actually find it easier to think about it in terms of like, well, what's gonna happen to winter and summer? Because winter and summer is when we would be like at these farther points. So if you had a perfect circle, if our eccentricity was actually in fact zero, then we would the Earth would be the same distance from the sun all the time. And that would lend to a like a stable climate. Um, so that's going to do things like minimize the differences between the, of temperature between the seasons. And since the Earth's is at a tilt, which is the main reason we have seasons, 
um, it would be the tilt is the only thing that affects like how cold will winter get, how hot will summer get. Um, but with a perfectly circle eccentricity, you can think of it as we would have, think of it as like mild winters, mild summers, mild springs, mild falls. Like that's actually kind of a planet I would love to live on. Um, we would still have seasons, but we would lean away from extremes. Whereas the more eccentric um, the orbit, the more, the less circular we are, the swing between summer and winter is just going to get bigger. You would see like spring and fall, these kind of transitory seasons, um, they're going to be less pronounced. It'll just be more of a like long swing from winter to summer. And note that if we were super eccentric, then both in like January and July, we're furthest from the sun. So we would see colder winters and colder summers with a very high eccentricity orbit. And so when Earth is at its max eccentricity, that's a state that favors um, the buildup of glaciers that kind of favors ice ages. Um, and this all, this all just gets more complicated and more fun when we add in the other two factors from the Milankovitch cycles. And those have more to do with um, the tilt of the Earth. Um, so that's going to be in the next video. So let's put a pen in our discussion of the climate um, for right now because we want to take into consideration the other two parts of the Milankovitch cycles, which are going to be the next two videos.